right. It looks like we're on just now with our next run, Judgment Silver Sword by Ero Kurikiso. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Good luck, and uh, let's do this. Awesome. It was uh, close enough. <laughs> Finnish is a difficult language, so if you try your best, I'm sure you will succeed. Like we will succeed in this game, going for this score attack in the hard difficulty. Which is the hardest difficulty of the game, and we'll be starting to run in. Uh, <laughs> it goes to the demo if I stay too long. So, three, two, one, go. Oh, run mode, fuck! Fuck, fuck, fuck. Cancel, cancel, cancel. I had the wrong settings. Sorry. I was doing some practice before the run, so I was in practice mode. Okay, for real now. Three, two, one, go. Okay, that's better. Getting off on the right foot here. Anyway, this is Judgment Silver, so it's stage map and we'll be playing for score. You see the score multiplier in the top left, in red. We'll be trying to increase that to get a few more points. Generally by touching bullets and enemies with this shield at point blank range. And there's also a glitch we are doing already. You see how we are firing two weapons at once. This game normally should have a wide weapon, a straight weapon, and a shield, three weapons, but by abusing a glitch you can use the straight weapon and the wide weapon at the same time. We are using auto fire in this run, since this glitch is used for the entire game and without it you would have to mash very quickly for the entire 30 minute run, which would be very painful. So we are using auto fire on the wide weapon while holding the it would look like this if we weren't using auto fire, but since the key is an auto fire, mashing doesn't do anything. But anyway, doing this allows us to deal a lot more damage and makes the game much more playable. It's uh, it would be extremely difficult without this glitch, even though it's an un unintentional glitch, I believe. It works out for the best that the game has this because it's uh, it gets a bit ridiculous later on if you do not abuse this. Uh, right now we got the. First major scoring technique coming up. We're gonna hit this guy point blank in the sword with the shield. And kill him with a very big multiplayer times 85 there. That's several million points right there from that single boss. It's gonna be the biggest scoring trick in the game, killing bosses with high multipliers if we can. So some of them are gonna be a bit more dangerous than that boss. Increasing the multiplayer point blank on that guy's bullets, then killing him with a high multiplier. The multiplayer also decays slowly when you're not killing stuff, so ideally you would also carry it over a bit after getting it up on a point blank attack. Like here we can point blank these guys with the shield, while also cancelling some of their bullets which both increase the multiplier to get a bit more points. You'll notice the shield is getting smaller when its energy on the lower left gets lower. Its effectiveness gets much, much worse when it's at low energy. It's not just visually smaller, it cancels bullets less, which means you are much more likely to die. So you have to be quite careful with how much energy you use. And the shield will respawn differently depending on where you are on the energy, which is a pretty obnoxious mechanic, actually. When I started playing this game, I died all the time to just uh, not really having the grasp on whether the shield would block shots, depending on at the energy level it was at. Okay, we got this mini boss. We will shouldn't be a problem. Now that I said that, I'll probably uh, jinx it and die to him anyway. But we want to increase his multiplier there with the shield, blocking some of his shots. Right, just like that went pretty good. And you'll notice that most of the bullets in this game are aimed directly at me. So even before the enemies come, I know that there's gonna be bullets that are gonna be aimed directly at my position, and I can. Uh, stay in motion, make small movements that let me avoid the bullets that are aimed at me. I can make redirections to create a gap in the bullets and uh, get across. Bit slow on that enemy kill, lost some of the damage, but it went fine. And when you pick lives in this game, you get short iframes, indicated by the yellow flashing on your ship. That lasts about one second, which are pretty swag to use. A lot of the enemies in this game are also spawning in random position, which you see right here on this wave. Where these blue enemies, blue enemies are going to spawn at the top is uh, pretty much random. So 
so this can go wrong if these guys are going to spawn in bad places and I go too aggressive on blocking the shields with the blocking the bullets with the shield to increase my score. If I went really aggressive on just blocking bullets for a while, I could get a bigger multiplier, but then the risk would also increase since I leave a lot of the enemies alive and then I have to rush around to kill them. Play it a bit safe for this marathon. Here's another major scoring trick. We can hit two of these guys when we go really close to them. The hitbox of the shield extends inside them and we can get some nice nice score and multiplier. You also get score for just hitting enemies with the shield in the form of tick points when the multiplier is high. So hitting two enemies at the same time with it don't increase the multiplier a lot but gets points from other sources. Then we get into the second judge of the game, Magnificence. Here comes the judge. It's got a this game's got pretty awesome teams with the uh, bosses being called Judges and the Tile Lock or Judgment Silver Sword, which also has some relevance to the Deep Law later, as we'll see. But that'll be uh, in a while. This is like it's just aimed at you, so if we position in advance and stream across the screen, we can avoid it completely. Then we've got another aimed attack here. Everything here, aside from the bullets at the side, are directly aimed at me, so I can just tap slowly left and uh, everything will miss me. Then we're going to be set up, setting up a kill with a high multiplier here. Point making the boss with the shield, while we also cancel these bullets to get a times 93. If we did that a bit better, I would have gotten a times 100, but it was about 93% of the way there, so it said it's close enough. Then we've got more enemies with uh, some lane bullets fired at me. These are not very dangerous, but the main thing here is using the shield a bit to increase my score multiplier by cancelling these bullets. And for that I'm using it while also using the other two weapons, the wide and the straight, which I call uh, I call this triple shot when you are using the two weapons and then mashing the shield. So you're basically killing enemies at the same time and also cancelling some bullets in front of you, which in some cases is the highest scoring method and also the safest. Only deflect that attack partially with the shield to increase my multiplier. This attack I'll just go in front so I can point like him safely. He's gonna die with a high multiplier. Then we go above to avoid those bullets which are accelerating. Now we are introduced the blue bullets on that way on this one. What they do is they start out slow but they accelerate as they progress on the screen. That's what the bullet color means in this game. Normally colored bullets keep a constant speed throughout their trajectory. Blue bullets accelerate. Thankfully, there's not that many bullets. They would be pretty bad if they were more often. Then we've got a pretty difficult area, area 17. You'll see how these guys are firing bullets that are aimed directly down and bullets that are aimed at me. But at some point, they stop firing these spinning aim bullets. This is actually because of a mechanic in the game where when there's too many bullets on the screen and the game is slowing down to a crawl, as you see, this game has got a ton of slowdown. When the game is slowing down too much and there's a lot of bullets on the screen, it actually switches enemies to bullet patterns that have less bullets in them. And that is why when the pattern gets hard like this, the bullets that are aimed directly at me stop spawning. But when it gets less dense, when I've killed some of the enemies, it starts firing again. It creates this interesting cycle on a lot of patterns in the game and it affects many strats later on. And we've got this mid boss here who is completely optional, but we might get a couple of points if we kill him in a good way. But he's also kind of dangerous and if you die to him it's uh, not at all worth it, so we see what happens. His movement is also completely random. If he stays still and lets me fire at him, he dies super quick. If he doesn't, then he just uh, never dies. Went pretty well though. Run going pretty okay for now. I want to stay close to the top of the screen here to set up for the upcoming wave after this one. I want to kill these guys with my shield for a very minimal score again, but hey, it's something. There's also a bonus for killing enemies faster in this game, which you see in this time bonus at the end of waves. That's generally not as big as using the multiplier, but in some cases it doesn't hurt to also kill things faster and get a bit of a bigger bonus on that time bonus. Also relevant to the score in this game is staying alive, which is why I'm playing relatively safe. These enemies are spawning in random places and if they spawn at opposite edges at the same time I have to move very quick to be able to kill them. If they make it to the bottom they do some ash shots there which could be sniping me if I wasn't aware of them or the 
Pylon hadn't gone to the end already. So it's good we made it through. Now we've got the third judge, the Mural Seed, Re. He's not a fan of the normies. Can you blame him? Anyway, he's got a bunch of aimed attacks and this one random attack. This is the random attack. Hopefully I won't uh, die to it. Let's not die, okay. Didn't make didn't die. Got a bit scared there for a second though. Then an aimed attack. Which we will dodge by going around his head. Does he even have a head? I guess he does. Anyway, I want to damage him in a specific way here to set up a high multiplier kill later. Which I might have missed since uh, this is a marathon and all. Kinda happens that uh, you start <laughs> choking strats you should already be reliably consistent with when you have to comment on Mike and play the marathon. Like the... I dealt just a bit too much damage to him. Ideally he would have lived like 2 seconds more and I would have cancelled one of his attacks to get more score but... At least I didn't die which is the big part. His second phase moves completely randomly, then fires these shits. And he speeds up this attack, depending on how much damage he's taken. So I want to damage him close to the way he gets fastest, where the attack is very dangerous, and then kill him immediately after. That's exactly how I wanted to go, for safety. Right, as I was saying, lives are important for scoring this game. When you clear the game, you get 5 million bonus points for each remaining extra life you have. So it's very important that you don't lose them prematurely. It's also not very marathon safe if you uh, don't have any lives and game over before the end. That would uh, not be very good, so let's hope that doesn't happen. We'll see. This is another of these relatively easy waves, but we want to use the shield here to increase my score by just a bit. Cancel some of the bullets, but not all of them, so I still also kill all the enemies if I can. Very good. Then we've got yellow enemies coming from the top. These are quite dangerous and the main thing here is to stay close to the center and a bit higher up the screen so they die faster. If they survive and get lower down the screen, the pattern gets really scary but we got through by skilling them faster. We want to increase the multiplier just a bit here but not as aggressively as I could since I want to keep some shield in stock for the upcoming wave after this one. I just want a third trickier once and I want to have maximum shield energy at the start of it for efficient cancels to do the strata I have in mind. These enemies are also spawn in random positions, so I want to kill the yellow enemy as it spawns, which is the most dangerous there. And this is what I want to shield energy for, to do that cancel there, and this cancel. And then another cancel still. Just make this really easy. Missed a bit of damage there, so he fired one more attack than normally, but uh, I made it through summer. It's a bit risky though. Then we're gonna be introduced to the fidget spinners whom you can barely see. They lose the aim that you have, but also partially random. So we have to do this kind of weaving pattern to make sure they don't ram into us. Then we've got this mid boss who is every single attack he fires his aim directly at me, so he should not pose much of an issue. Lost a bit of damage, but he will die anyway. Good. Then we've got another difficult wave coming up after these pillar missiles. Ideally I would have a bit more multiplier for these from the mid boss, but... Now we got the real enemies. Remember that quirk earlier where when there's too many bullets on the screen, the enemies stop firing some of their bullets? That's what happened during that strat there and what makes it possible. They fire so many bullets when you go in front of them and the bullets spread out that... Uh, part of their bullets get cancelled and you can just... Uh, get some extra point like damage on them at the start. Here I want to deal as much damage to them as possible to kill them ideally before they get to their next cycle, which is this one. So I didn't get it, but killing two already makes this a lot safer and gets me some of the points. Then we got another dangerous wave where we got a lot of blue bullets. These blue bullets are coming from enemies that fire these bullets, blue bullets aimed at me when I kill them. You can hear them by this flat sound effect they make when they die. They're just pyramids kind of, squares, diamonds. Maybe they're diamonds, but the pattern is kind of weird anyway. It didn't go so well there, but I think this one is another dangerous way with these yellow enemies. We want to kill the yellow enemies first here and try to avoid the blue bullets as best we can while making them dead. If the yellow enemies don't die fast enough, that pattern can get extremely dangerous. They need to set up for those fidget things. I really can't keep up with this game since it uh, starts getting kind of quick at this point. Uh, we just uh, don't have any daylight between each other anymore. So, uh, I'll just try to keep up, if I can. We've got this bit of a mid-boss again here. As you can see, the strat here is to spin around him to avoid these bullets he aims directly at you. And now we've got a strat here at the very end, 
to increase my multiplier before I finish him off. Right there. For a bit of extra score. He's fixed to give you an extend. Then we want to do another damage control strat here. Since we want these guys to enter their second phase to dual mirror shield the two charges at the same time if possible. For safety and uh, various other reasons. So we shoot them in a very specific order to try and damage them in an appropriate way. Get a bit of damage on this guy on the left, then move to the guy on the right. Avoid this attack, which is aimed directly at me just by tapping a bit. Then again go around his head. This is a very similar pattern to the one of the third just the first mirror shield, but just harder since there are two of these guys. And we want to point like this guy a bit, which is actually pretty safe despite looking pretty scary. Some more damage on this guy. Since one of these spawns earlier than the other, we are dealing more damage to the one that spawned later, generally. To compensate for one of them naturally taking more damage by virtue of being first. Avoid these lasers by doing this pre-planned route. Set up for these lasers. Can be pretty precise, and it's easier to fail than it looks, I think. Good thing I didn't choke it. Now one of them should be dying right about now, and then the other in very short succession. Right there, and then the other. That's exactly what I want to happen. Them dying as close to each other as possible, so they both enter the second phase at the same time. If one of them is in the first phase, which is mostly static or aimed, you can do the same route every time. The second phase is totally random with their movement, so if you had the first phase route, which you have to do, and the second phase route, which you have to improvise since these guys are random, it would uh, be very dangerous, so for that we want these guys to enter the second phase at the same time so we can first do the static route for the first phase and then do the random route for the second phase. Which went pretty fine, they moved in a friendly way and took damage nicely. Then we got another significant scoring start here, using the shield on these guys at the start, increasing my multiplayer by just a bit. Then we got randomly spawning blue enemies that spawn these suicide bullets that accelerate towards us from the top. The positions are random, so how we have to dodge these is gonna vary. And if we don't kill these enemies that are coming from the top, as you saw there, they spin around the screen and fire at me from behind, which is very dangerous. So we want to stay close to these guys and keep killing them, while also making small movements to kill these towns. Just like that. Went very smoothly. Then this mid boss enemy, which we just fought before the dual mirror shield judges. This is the same thing, except we also got some fidget spinners friends with him. Not sure what this game's obsession with fidget spinners is, but it's got uh, quite a few enemies to resemble those. Then we've got another way with these blue enemies that uh, are not that dangerous but are a good source of score. By mashing the shield a bit to increase my multiplier. Get more score. Then we got some more really dangerous ways with these yellow enemies, which are upgraded versions of early game enemies. Which was a, was a while ago, but maybe you can remember them. They're just bullets worth that are way more aggressive and dangerous than the early ones. And they also spawn in this really nasty pattern with other enemies and can be absolute terrors. This I only died once, which is could be a lot worse than this. Then we got more of these enemies. There's a gap in this pattern. In between, they then firing that wider spread and firing straight aim bullets. There's the cap that which you can use to restrain them safely in between their shots. Which I didn't quite read properly there but still got through. Then we've got more of these enemies. This one is the last super dangerous wave. I would ideally want to kill these enemies before they start flooding the screen with bullets and walling me. Which is currently going fine but these guys are spawning in random places that might really start being bad. But it went fine, way through. Made it through just barely. Then we've got one more wave of yellow enemies. And during this we want to set up for a fidget spinner wave coming from the top right after. Which starts spawning while these guys are still in the air. And if you're not prepared for it, you uh, kind of die instantly, which I'm not prepared right now. So I needed luck there to survive. I could have just uh, died there if these guys spawned in a bad position. But uh, I got pretty lucky, so I managed to survive this by being slightly out of position. It's a very difficult transition in the this wave there have to kill the enemies very quick and set up 
set up a good position to avoid the enemies running from the top at the same time. A lot of things going on. And we soon get into the final bosses, but first we've got one more area, which is uh, area... I don't even know what area this is, 29? We've got more of these blue enemies. This is probably the most dangerous way with them that we're, that we're gonna see, so the score is not gonna be... Scoring's not gonna be as aggressive here. I'm just gonna kill these first two safely since they can uh, pre a bit bad. They can swing behind you, start shooting, do bad things. Then just do the same stack we've done many times in the game here. Use a bit of the shield to increase my multiplier while killing most of the enemies. Then I want to wait a bit here before killing this enemy to reach out my shield energy. Now we're gonna get another judge, which is Mitsurugi Revenge, which, if you remember, the very first boss in the game. He's a bit like this, but this one's got a bigger sword. And as we all know, big swords are better. However, he's still vulnerable to just being point like with the shield and yielding massive score in the process. Times 100 multiplier, very good. That's how I want it to go. That yields a crap ton of score. And it also lo looks very swag, really fun to do. And also very safe since the boss moves the same way every time and the way he swings his sword is aimed at you. So if you know how to do it, it's gonna be safe every time. This attack is also aimed, but it's possible to choke this because of his movement, which is partially dependent on the timing at which you kill his first race, which is difficult to get consistent since he moves constantly and never so st stands still. So the second phase is movement and where he fires his attacks can vary. However, he went very smoothly and this is actually a super excellent run. 11 lives during the final boss is uh, like at the same amount as I had in my PB, which is pretty nice. And the final boss is, as you can see, he's is a bit difficult. That opening attack is aimed directly at you and another component aimed around you. And you have to make very small taps, ideally of only one or two pixels each, to fit into the very small gap. We got it, thankfully. Then we got a laser attack here. We got a transition to this while dodging that previous attack. We got the route. Then we got another aimed attack, where you have to make small taps, but this one is not nearly as tight as the opener, so this should be just fine. And you can also block this with the shield at the end if you make mistakes. Then a dangerous attack, which thankfully is made of a small blood so that we can most block the shield to avoid the risk. This attack is also aimed directly at you if you just make small movements. It'll all go around you. I didn't want to increase my multiplayer on these bullets before I kill him. Right there, times 87, very good. Then we got the second phase, which is where this boss gets really nasty. Then you've got these random spinning square bullets and these lasers that first stop then home towards you after lingering out a little bit. What we also want to do here, which you see when we fly towards the boss, is deal more damage to him because bad things are going to happen if we don't damage him, like this attack, which is, uh, if I dodge this, it's going to be completely luck. If I die to it, I'm just going to say that I got unlucky, but I got incredibly lucky by managing to dodge it. The most dangerous attack this boss got does red meteors. They spawn in random places, fire those awful bullets. It's just a brutal attack, but I got really good RNG. The meteors can spawn extremely badly and force you to move around a lot, which makes the bullets way harder to dodge, but they were very cooperative this time, thankfully. Then we've got these laser spawners, which also spawn in random places, which you may have noticed this is trying to this game. And then they fire this laser aimed at you, that first fires at you and then aims towards you with a swing. If those guys spawn in bad places, they can be extremely difficult, but they also were very cooperative. This run is actually going amazingly well. This is not a very marathon safe game generally, but this run has been extremely friendly to me in a variety of ways. Aside from this attack, his movement is random. And if he wants to make large moves like this, he gets very difficult very quick. But dying once on him is not such a big deal. I still have 10 lives left for the remaining final bosses or final judges, which there are a couple of. We see how they are gonna go. That was a really solid divine flow. I only died one time. On average, I die like three or four times on that boss during runs, so it was a both very good RNG and some good execution on him. Now we got the one of the last judges, Divine Expression. He might be somehow related to Divine Flow, given he's uh, also divine, but we don't really know the lore in this game. He's just this glowing ball that flashes in the air. You figure it out. Anyway, this attack is always gonna go the same way if you do it correctly, which we did. This attack is also just the same pattern every time, so if you know how this is gonna go, and know how to adapt your movement to the very heavy slowdown, this is gonna be fine. 
Then another attack just aimed uh, directly at you. Just makes more movements and you'll avoid it all. Then this attack is just a trick move that is entirely aimed around you. If you move here, you die, but if you stay still, you live. Then this opener is again aimed directly at you. You just uh, move forward into the queue and uh, you'll always live. Then we increase my multiplayer right here before killing him. Get some good score. Very good. Go above him to avoid this attack, which otherwise kills you. A lot of kind of cheap memorized attacks on this final boss here. This one you also have to memorize, so it gets really difficult. Okay, then we got the hard attack here. It fires these aimed lasers and also aimed star bolts. At first it's pretty tame, but later on, meaning right now, the fire rate gets a lot higher. And the slowdown also changes, which makes the sound desync from when the attack is actually aimed at you, which is easy to get tripped by, if you're not aware that the sound cues are actually changing their timings due to the slowdown. Anyway, that went really well on that boss. Then we got another judge. There's quite a few of these in the game. This is Mitsurgi Rebirth, which is uh, like the first boss of the game, except this time uh, he's got a uh, new coat of paint. Fuck, he moved randomly. On that opener, he swings random movements, and uh, if he moves in a bad way right before he fires, it can be very difficult to react to him. If I was just a bit faster, I could have made it there, but overall, it was not the best luck. Then on this attack, he fires the same bullet at you that bounces off the sides with the screen at first. That's the easy part. The hard part comes now when they stop and then start moving again. And they start moving really fast! <laughs> that, that, that was really lucky. They can spread in absolutely super dangerous ways that are very difficult to avoid. But it was a gentle attack with the randomness. This has actually been an incredibly lucky run so far. A lot of things in this game could be a lot harder than they have been, but the luck's been very gentle overall. This dog is partly aimed at you, which is why we went across the screen there. Then this attack has a static... That's an aim part there, and uh, a random circle of bullets, and we were able to position ourselves according to a visual cue by lining up my shot in between the bullets and uh, then going in between, which is still pretty precise, but we got it. Then this attack is... Uh, if these guys hit you, you die, okay? You don't want that to happen, but by doing a specific strat where you hurt them together into a ball, and then cut between the homing ball that is spawning and the homing balls that are chasing you. You can avoid it pretty consistently. Good thing we got the strat. In the past that homing ball attack used to be considered uh, impossible. No one had figured out how to dodge it, but uh, we figured it out, luckily. Then we got the final boss, and uh, we gotta explain this. He fires these waves of bullets that you have to block the shield that will otherwise just kill you instantly. But he's also got shield breaker bullets that if you touch these with the shield. You see these slow bullets that are blue and have this deep blue in the smear center. If you hit this with the shield, your shield disappears, your energy reaches zero and you die, and then you can't block this shot that fires at you at rapid speed that you have blocked with the shield. So the thing to do here is you have to be far away from this bullet that break your shield, like that, and then be able to block these shots. Then we want to do a suicide here, to set up this final kill here. We're going to be using the triple shot point back on him, <laughs> like this. Just like that, except ideally the side side would be slightly different timing, so we would get slightly more score at the end, but that was still a pretty damn solid final boss kill. Got the suicide when he transitioned to his final HP phase, which you can tell by how frequently he is shooting shots. There's no clear cue for how much HP he has, so you just kind of have to watch his shooting and feel how the damage is going to suicide at the right time, and then kill him. Kill him during the iframes after your death to get this big multiplier, which was time 64 here, which is uh, amazing for a marathon. 202 million hold How the fuck is this run so good? It's the fifth best score I've ever gotten in this game, which is uh, it's a lot better than I was expecting to do at ESA together. Simply amazing. Anyway, I think I've been talking a while, so uh, does our announcer have anything to say for us? I definitely do. Uh, we have a $6 donation from Rocket Racer. They're saying, it's criminal to have Toho 6 without some Master Spark. 
And their money is going towards Marissa B being the character in Shot Choice. And of course, because that is more than five, it's now taking the lead. So Marissa B, assuming nothing else happens on that front, will be the choice for the next run to Ho 6. Thank you for your donation. Anyway, I think that was uh, that's all for my run. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, for letting me run this score demonstration on ESA together, which uh, is of course a privilege since it's not really your traditional speedrun and it's a it's a pretty dangerous game to showcase live as well and try to commentate. But uh, it went much better than I expected, so I'm uh, happy with this and uh, guess I'll be muting myself in a bit. And uh, thanks, guys. Thank you very much. That was a very nice run, a very nice score attack. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, coming up next we have Toho 6, Embodiment of Scarlet Devil by Freya's Spirit. Uh, so that's going to be...